Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand about the direct map technique. So we will understand what does this technique mean and how this concept is related to your cache memory, main memory and the CPU. So in the previous video, we have discussed about the concept of the mapping technique and we discussed some of the basic concept behind all the mapping techniques. So we understood that our main memory is organized in form of blocks. So in our example, we have assumed that each block containing two words, word 0 and word 1 are contained inside block number 0. Likewise, block number 1 contains word number 2 and 3 and so on. That means this is the block size. Block size in this case uh, for the main memory is equal to two words. Okay. And for the time being, we will assume that one word is equal to one byte. Although your word can be of 2 byte, 4 byte or 8 byte and so on. Okay. But by default for the time being, we will assume one word equal to one byte. Now your cache is organized in form of lines. So this is your line number 0, line number 1, 2 and 3. So there are total 4 lines in your cache memory and there are total 32 blocks in your main memory starting from the block number 0. Right. Now, whenever CPU asks for some data, then it always generates a address. Okay. So let's say CPU wants to find this word number 5 from the main memory. So CPU will generate the corresponding address. Now, after generating the address for the word number 5, the CPU will find the corresponding data or the corresponding word inside your cache memory. If it is present inside cache memory, then it is given back to the CPU. But if it is not present, then we will search inside the main memory. Now inside main memory, we have this particular word number 5. Okay. So what we will do, we will actually not give word number 5 to your cached memory. We will actually give this whole complete block number 2 to the cached memory due to the locality of reference. So word number 4 and word number 5 both will be coming to your cached memory. Now the question is where this block number 2 should be placed in cache memory whether in line number 0, line 1, 2 or 3. So here comes your memory mapping technique or the cache map technique. They tells you that where should your corresponding block should be mapped to the cache line in which cache line your memory block should be placed. Okay. So we will understand that uh, out of the all three types of the memory mapping technique how direct mapping technique will work at this place. Okay. Now, this is the first use of the mapping technique. Now, when the data is placed inside, let's say in any of the block using the direct mapping technique, let's say it is placed in the line number two, then your corresponding word from your cache memory will be given to your CPU. Now, for the time being, let's assume your main memory block number two is going inside or stored inside line number two of the cache. So that means word four and word five both will be coming inside line number two. And after that, your corresponding word that is word number five will be transferred to the CPU. So here word transfer will take place and from main memory to your cache, your block transfer will take place. So your memory mapping technique works here. And the second place where memory mapping technique works is Let's say you have this data that is word number 5 and word number 5 already present into your cache memory. Then let's say again uh, your CPU asks for the data that is word number 4. So word number 4 is having the address this one. Okay. So when this corresponding word number 4 address is generated, first data will be searched inside your cache memory. So inside your cache memory, how I will search for your word number 4. So this answer is given by your memory mapping technique and we will see that how this direct mapping technique will answer this question that is how my data will be searched inside our cache memory. So now let's understand direct mapping technique. So let's assume CPU is asking for some data and this data is not present inside your cache memory. So your main memory will be asked for getting that data right now we will understand how the main memory block will be mapped or stored inside your cache memory. That is where will my main memory block should be stored in which line it should be stored into your cache memory. So you can see here 
my main memory is having total 32 blocks and my cache memory is having only four lines okay so each line of the cache memory will be storing any of these main memory blocks okay so i have to map these 32 blocks of the main memory inside four blocks okay so let's see how this direct mapping technique will be mapping this main memory block to the cache memory so this technique says your block number zero will always be going inside line number zero of the cache so i will be writing block zero as b0 then it says block number one will always be mapping to the line number one then it says block number two will be going inside line number two and block number three will always be going inside your line number three okay so this is how direct mapping technique is saying now the question is if we have the block number four okay where does that block number four will be going okay so as we can see we have only four blocks so what will happen this block number four will again be going inside your this block number zero okay and block number five will again be going inside this line number one okay and block number six will be going inside this block number seven will be going inside line number three the same way if we have next blocks that is block number eight it will again be starting from the line number zero block number nine will be stored inside line number one then block number 10 will be here and block number 11 will be here and so on that means your block numbers of the main memory they are directly mapping to your cache line number okay and there will always be fixed location of the main memory block inside your cache lines that means this block number one will always be stored inside line number one block five will always be coming inside line number one the same way this block number six will always be inside line number two that means you definitely know that where my corresponding main memory block will be mapping or stored inside which line of the cache now if i ask you one question that if we are given a memory block number let's say memory block number is represented by k and we are told that we have total n lines inside your cache memory okay so then how you can find the cache line number given this k and n so there will be some arithmetic operation on this k and n by which we can find the corresponding line number for your given k so you can write k mod n this mod is actually division that means k division n so this modulus operator is giving me the answer after division of k and 9 that is it will give me the remainder so if you can see here that let's say k is 0 then 0 divided by n what is the value of n so here total you are having n equal to 4 cache line so 0 by 4 it will be 0 that means your 0th main memory block will be mapping to your cache line number 0 now if i divide 1 by 4 that is the block number 1 of the main memory it will be mapped to the 1 because 1 mod 4 is 1 then 2 mod 4 it is 2 that is block number 2 of the main memory will be going into the cache block 2 so in this way we can see let's say if we are asked that if k is 6 okay so 6 mod cache lines are 4 so 6 mod 4 will be 2 okay remainder is 2 that means your sixth block of the main memory will be going inside your cache line number 2 so in this way we can see that the destination is having only n lines so we are dividing each memory block by that line number okay and by this we can find the corresponding cache line number for the given block number of the main memory so this is how direct mapping technique works in this technique i can definitely tell that given memory block will be going in which cache line number so now we understood that how these memory blocks will be mapped to the cache memory block using the direct map technique so our this task is over now we have to understand that how the data will be searched inside your cache memory okay so let's see now before this let's understand how the cpu will search the data inside your main memory so we know cpu generates a address okay so let's say cpu wants to find the word number six and word number six is present inside block number three so cpu generates the address of the word number six now cpu checks into the cache memory and there is no block number three inside the cache memory so cpu checks inside the main memory now when cpu checks the data 
or the word number six inside the main memory. So how it will be served? So actually this address will be divided into two parts. First part will be block number and second part will be word offset. So this address of the six bits is divided into two parts. Now you can see inside your main memory, there are total 32 blocks. So how many bits will be needed to address or to reference 32 blocks? So you know in computer science, if let's say you have four people, okay? So how many bits you will be needing to reference four people or to give address to the four people? So you will say, I can give 00, 0 to this people, then 01, then 10, then 11 to this people. So that means you need two bits to reference four people. And let's say if you have only two people, then how many bits you need? You will say, I can assign zero to first people and one to the next people. So that means for four people, you need how many bits? Two. Okay. So we can write four as two key power two. So we need two bits. What does it mean? You need these many bits actually. And if you have only two people, so two can be written as two key power one. And you can see for two people, you need how many bits? One bit. So this one is actually your that one bit. So in this way, if you have 32 blocks or 32 people, how many bits you need? Now 32 can be written as 2 to the power 5. That means 5 bits are sufficient to address 32 blocks. So in this way, we will say this block number, which is actually telling me or helping me to reference 32 blocks. It will be of 5 bits. Okay. Out of 6 bits, 5 bits will be reserved for your block number. Now remaining 1 bit will be used for your word offset. So let's see how these block number and word offset will be helping me to retrieve the word number 6. So I have divided our 6 bits into these 5 and 1 bit. So 1 bit is for word offset and these 5 bits for block number. So what will happen? First, your block number will be searched in which your word number 6 is present. So you can see here, your word number 6 is present in which block? Block number 3. So you can see in these 5 bits or in these 5 bits, this 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 is what? It is actually 3 in decimal form. Okay. So this block number is saying that my data will be present inside block number 3. Okay. So by block, I came to this word 6 and word 7. Now which word I need? I need word number 3. 6. So you can see here word offset is having 1 bit. Okay. 1 bit can be 0 or 1. Now currently it is 0. So 0 means this word. Okay. And if let's say this word offset is 1. Okay. Then that means you are asking for the word number 7. So you can see here inside your each block how many words are there? There are 2 words. So again for referencing 2 people how many bits you need? You will need only 1 bit. It can be either 0 or 1. Actually, this word offset is helping me to reference the word inside your block. So depending on how many words are there, this will be of that size. So here we have two words. So this word offset will be of one bit. So 0 means I need the word number 6. So this way your reference in the main memory are made using this address. Now we will see how the CPU will search the data when this address is presented to the cache memory. So now let's assume that your cache memory contains your block number 3, which is actually fetched from your main memory last time, right? Now CPU wants to find this word number 6, okay? So CPU generates this address for the word number 6. Now when this address is presented to the cache memory, that means when cache memory is started to be searched, then how the searching will take place in the cache memory? So at that time, this address will actually be divided into three fields. And what are those three fields? So in direct map technique, it says that your address will be divided into tag, line number, and third field will be word offset. So your total, these six bits currently, they will be divided into three parts. Now how these three fields will be helping me to search the data inside the cache memory? Now for the time being, let's assume this cache memory is a collection of many houses, okay? So cache memory can be assumed to a big locality in which there are four houses, line number 0, line 1, line 2 and line 3. And each house contains two people. So 
in the same way this line number three is one of the house and it contains word number six word number seven as two people now if we want to go to the word number six we want to talk to the word number six then how we can do that so first we have to come to this locality and find the corresponding line number or the house number in which your data or the word number six is present so first we have to come to the line number three or the house number three then we will find which word we want to address word number six or seven so in the same way first your line number will be found that in which line number my word can be present so first this field will be used line number okay so line number three in current case will be found that this is your corresponding line number in which your data can be present okay and after that what will happen we have to go to this word number six now before this there is the tag bit which will be coming into role so for the timing let's assume there are some bits which are stored in each of the cache line those bits are called tag bits okay so in each of the line there will be some bits which are called tag bits and these tag bits are same for word number six as well as word number seven the same way if there are two words stored inside the line number two then tag bits will be same for those two words okay so after finding the block so after finding the corresponding line number we will be going to the tag number and then we will do some processing on this tag number and after that we will be finding our corresponding word and to find that corresponding word your word offset this field will be coming into role so let's see how this all will happen so for this you should know that how your six bits will be divided into these three fields so here this word offset is the same word offset which is here that means this word offset is helping us to recognize the words so in each of the cache line how many words can be there they can be two words and in the same way in main memory also each block was of two words okay so to reference two word or to address two word how many bits we will be needing you will say one bit okay so this word offset will be of size one bit now this line number is helping us to recognize any one line out of these four lines so there are four lines and to recognize four lines how many bits we will be needing two bits because four can be written as two to the power two so this will be of two bits okay so your line number can be like zero zero or zero one or one zero or one one okay now out of six bits two bits are for the line number one bit is for the word offset so how many bits are remaining you will say three bits okay so those three bits will be your tag bits so this six bit address will be divided into these three fields and cpu will be using these three fields to retrieve your word number six from cache memory now let's see how so we can see now that this six bit address will be divided into these three fields okay so triple zero will be for tag double one will be for line number and zero is word offset okay so now when this address is given to the cache memory then first your line number will be searched so here it is one one so one one is actually three in decimal form so that means our desired block number is or the desired line number in cache memory is three so we come to here right now the second role will be of the tag bit so what this tag bit is helping us to know so these tag fields tells me whether the main memory block which is currently kept into the your cache line it is our desired block or not that means we brought this block number three into your line number three okay so this tag bits will be telling me whether this block that is block number three is my desired block or not okay so how it will be helping us so you can see that this address will be triple zero one one zero and this is triple zero one 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 so when this block number three is stored inside your cache memory line number three then first three bits these triple zero and these triple zero these are the same okay for word number six and word number seven so this triple zero will be stored here in cache line number three 
okay and this will be same for word number six and word number seven so what will happen now these tag bits which are coming from the cpu side these will be matched with the already stored tag bits into your line number three if they are matching then we will say your block number which is presently in line number three it is valid okay so here we can see the cpu is saying we have triple zero and the tag bits stored currently in cache memory line number three is three zeros so both are matching that means this currently block number three is a valid block inside your cache memory and now third role will be of your word offset that means now we can find whether we want word number six or word number seven so this zero is telling me that i want word number six okay so this way your data is such in, inside your cache memory using the direct mapping technique now let's say if you generate the address for the word number seven that means triple zero and triple one okay then again you should be retrieving this word number seven so when this word address is given to your cache memory then again it will be divided into three fields that means these three bits for the tag bits and this one one for the line number and last one is for the word offset so first your one one is telling that you want to go into the line number three so line number three we will be coming now your tag bits will be matched so here we have three zeros and here also we have the three zeros both are matching that means line number three contains our desired block now we will be retrieving our word number seven how it is one so one means we want to retrieve word number seven because zero was for the word number six so from here word number seven will be given to your cpu okay so this way your word number seven was fast so the address generated by the cpu is same but it is like the division of the address is different while we are searching the data inside cache memory or while we are searching the data inside the main memory so this is the way how the direct memory technique works to search for the data inside your cache memory now let's take a case when tag bits do not match so for example here you can see in line number three we have the block number three block number three means word number six and seven they are present okay now word number six and word number seven both are having last three bits as triple zero okay so this triple zero are stored as tag bits inside your this line number three okay when this word number three was stored inside this line number three now in direct mapping technique we saw that in line number zero which blocks can be present we say block number zero then block number four block number eight and so on they can be present and likewise here it can be block number one block number five and so on but at one particular time only either block zero or block four or block eight any one can be present not all the four can be present or not all uh, these three can be present okay at one time only one block in one line can be present now the question is in line number three currently we have block number three of the main memory can i store block number 27 also in line number three so i mean can block number 27 also mapped to line number three the answer is yes because if you divide this block number 27 by 4 what remainder you will get you will get 3 okay so the 3 is your cache line number that means block 27 will also be stored in cache memory line number 3 when it is needed now let's say the cpu wants to find the word number 54 that means this okay and it generates this corresponding address now for the searching we have to divide this address into three fields so direct mapping techniques works in this way only okay now you know this word number 54 is lying inside this block number 27 but currently block number 27 is not present inside line number 3 that means your word number 54 is not present inside line number 3 that means your word number 54 when it is searched inside your cache memory it will not be found so let's see will it work so here you can see we have divided this 54 word number address into these three fields okay by the direct mapping technique so first your line number will be matched so here the line number is 11 that means it is line number 3 
okay so we will go to the line number three now after that what we have to do we have to match the tag so the tag which is given by the cpu it is 110 and the tag which is already stored it is triple zero so both these tags triple zero and 110 they are not matching that means the block which is stored here it is our not desired block okay and you can see also this is block number three of the main memory and this word is actually present inside the block number 27 so due to the uh, tag not matching we can say that our desired block is not present inside this line number three and now we will not proceed forward with this offset okay we will not match with this offset because our tag bits are not matching so as our desired block is not present inside your cache memory so this scenario is called we have missed the cache that is cache miss so cache miss i have explained in our previous video you can find the link of that video in the description below or in the i button also so cache miss means whenever our data is not present or not found inside your cache memory and what is cache hit it means whenever you are searching for your data inside your cache memory it is found so i hope you have now got a good understanding of how the direct map technique works and how the cpu searches your data inside your cache memory how the address is divided into various three fields and what is the working of the line number tag and the offset so to summarize the thing our cpu generates a address okay so that address is actually virtual address and then that is converted to physical address but for the time being let's understand that cpu generates a main memory address that is physical address now that address is divided into three fields by the direct map technique tag line number and word offset so first your corresponding line number is found in which your word or your block can be present okay so for the time being let's say this is the line number now after that this tag is passed and this tag which is coming from the cpu side both are matched if both are matching that means we have found the block inside our cache that means we have the cache hit and we can read the desired word from here using the word offset field but if both these tag they are not matching that means we have not found our data inside our cache so we have to update the cache and how we can do we can search the main memory and we can retrieve the data from there and update the cache so to end the video let's understand what are the advantage and disadvantage of direct map technique so here you can see we have the line number okay so by the line number we can directly access any line number of the cache memory so here we can see cache memory is acting like ram random access memory and we can directly go to the particular line number so we can say that this technique is a simple and inexpensive technique that's hardware means whenever we have the line number okay we are just checking the corresponding line number we are directly going to that line number into your cache memory we are not going to the each of the line of the cache to check whether it is our desired line or not okay so in this way the hardware or the circuit will be very simple okay that will directly be going into your desired cache line next is search time is independent of your cache size so here you can see we are not going to the each of the location okay we are just directly going to the cache line whichever is our desired cache line okay so it does not matter how big or how large this cache is okay so if the cache is also large then also we are directly jumping to our respective cache line okay so that means the size of the cache does not matter and it does not affect or changes the search time it will be same for whether our cache is small or whether our cache is big disadvantage of this direct map technique is if all the blocks which are in our program they are mapping to the same cache line then we will have many collisions okay so what does i mean for example this line is present inside your program and let's say this b of i is present inside your main memory block 4 a i is in block number 0 of the main memory and c i is in block number 8 of the main memory and your cache is having only four lines so in this case block 0 4 and 8 of the main memory they all will be mapping to the cache line 0 
so that means whenever these will be retrieved or they will be fetched from your main memory they will all be stored inside your line number zero but at one particular time only one block can be present inside your line number zero that means each of these block will collide okay and what will happen a situation called thrashing will happen okay which will result in poor hit ratio or poor hit rate or you can say less cpu utilization so more we will be talking about this thrashing into our operating system lectures for the time being you can understand that only one block can be present in a particular line so whenever both or all the three blocks are needed then we will not be able to have all these three blocks inside our cache so due to this we will not be able to find all the data inside our cache memory at one time leading to our poor hit ratio so this was all about direct map technique in the next video we will discuss the numericals based on the direct map technique to get a better understanding of this technique so if you have any comment query suggestion please write down into the comment box and please do like and share this video and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further notification see you in the next video till then goodbye